So we're going to start with a, a picture of the blue marble here. What do we see? We see a lot of blue and we see a lot of white. That's all water. So, in fact, 70% of the planet is covered with water, but less than 2.5% is fresh, and less than 1% is available to us for fresh water. So this is my artwork. This guy's name is Hyde for Hydro. Right now, there's over 7.4 billion of these guys on the planet. So by the time my four-year-old daughter is my age, there'll be over 9 billion. So really, we're challenged with trying to figure out how we can sustain the three basic needs of these people. Food, shelter, and water. In addition to that, over 90% of natural disasters are actually caused by water. So looking back through time and how our relationship with water has changed, in addition to practicing for episodes of Naked and Afraid, we've been like moving with water. So these were nomadic people. Okay, so they're hunter-gatherers, and they moved with water, and they moved with food. Okay, so over time, we started to adapt, and we started to be, be able to cultivate the land and actually move water and manage water. This is a big transition that had a huge impact on civilizations and how, how people grew. And really, this really hasn't changed too much through time. Our livelihoods are still dependent mostly on our ability to cultivate food and our ability to manage water. In addition to that, is trying to look out for the future and see how climate is affecting us. So, one of my favorite Nobel laureates, um, his, he once said that you don't need a weatherman to know which way the wind blows, okay? But in fact, you do need a weatherman to know which way the wind blows tomorrow or next week. So instead of looking up, now we're able to start to look down. So this is the first image of the planet Earth. This was taken on April 24th in 1946. And this is amazing. And then, in fact, the scientists initially were upset with the clouds because it, it obstructed the view. So fast forward to 2016. NASA has over 18 satellites that are devoted to monitoring different components of the water cycle. This is amazing. We can tell all kinds of things. So in addition to just getting fancy pictures and nice images like this, um, we can tell what type of vegetation, the health of this vegetation, the height of this water within centimeters, and also the quality of this water. This is great. This is really exciting stuff. But what's more exciting to me is applying this data. Okay, now this, this image was taken one mile from my house earlier this year in Ellicott City, Maryland. Two hours before this, I brought a, I bought a, a Japanese pressing of Led Zeppelin IV in that store. <laughs> Two hours later, the store was gone. It's a true story. So, how do we merge these Earth observations with socioeconomic data? How do we really improve our understanding of our, our world and improve our decision making? So, this, I consider this really the golden age of remote sensing. And in addition to looking at natural disasters, we look at how we can improve our management of water. This is a classic example. On the right is the Aral Sea before, on the left is the Aral Sea afterwards. It was a huge disaster. So our management of water requires a constant observation. So whether or not climate change is real, this guy may have a different opinion. But really, we're trying to move from, from beliefs to knowledge. And the way that happens is by observing and understanding our Earth. And, can the, and the best way to do that is through observing. In this golden age of remote sensing, the unmanned aerial vehicles are amazing. So we can have observations of Earth at centimeter resolution. Okay. This is changing the game for observing our Earth. In addition to this, this is a solar plane. So Facebook actually is, is launching a solar plane in, in Africa so a billion more people can look at happy cat videos on YouTube. <laughs> you know? But really, it's about bringing information to people. And that's what we're trying to do as well. CubeSats is one of the most exciting innovations in satellites. So we can throw up a swarm of satellites for a fraction of the price of a traditional satellite mission. This is really a game changer. This is changing everything. So the question is, how do we deal with all the, uh, the extra data and the data processing? This is the internet computer in 1946. So my cell phone is 230 million times faster than this computer. So how do we adapt with this? Will my daughter, when she grows up, what is her relationship with water going to be? Is she going to embrace these changes? And is she going to adapt with it? So I encourage everyone to visit the Applied Sciences website that is listed here. And if you have any questions, I would love to talk with you afterwards. Thank you so much.